Now in this video we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at what we call the periodic table. Now you may have come across the periodic table. Um, it's one of the tools that chemists use and it's a really invaluable tool for knowing lots and lots and lots about the elements. Here you can see um, a it's rather good periodic table, this one, that can be all shapes and sizes and forms. This one's pretty good, it gives us all the important information. Now, go to 103 here, there are other elements beyond here, but we're not particularly interested in those, okay? So, we're going to focus today on just these elements in the periodic table we see here. Now, let's navigate our way around, shall we? First thing is, you need to know that the vertical columns, that's these things here, the vertical columns are called groups, and they're numbered from 1 to 8. So, 1 hydrogen, lithium, sodium, 2, beryllium, magnesium, over here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. This is sometimes called a 0, um, 8 or 0. Notice this big chunk here in the middle, they're not given group numbers. These are your transition metals that come across in another video. Now, the other thing you need to know about are the rows. Now, you can see here, it's arranged in rows. Now, these rows are called periods, so there's a period there and there. Let's look at the numbering, shall we? So, period 1, two elements, hydrogen, helium. Period 2, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, and so on. So you can see there how they're arranged in terms of periods and groups. Okay, so what we can do for any given element, we can read off the group and period number. Let's go back a second. So you can see here, say we chose um, sulfur, for example. We could say, what is its um, group and period? Or, I know, let's look at silicon. Now, silicon, as you can see, is in group 1, 2, 3, 4, and in period 1, 2, 3. Just check it. Yep, silicon's in group 4 and period 3. So for any given element, we can also look at its atomic number and relative atomic mass, because these are given by figures on the table. So here is the atomic number, and here is the relative atomic mass, or mass number. Now, I did say a few moments ago what a good table this was, but in fact, this is a slightly confusing in that some tables arrange it in this way, but the majority of tables would have the bigger number at the top. So, in, a, in most periodic tables, you'd probably find the relative atomic mass is at the top, atomic number at the bottom. It doesn't matter. Always remember that the relative atomic mass is the bigger of the two numbers. It's also referred to as the mass number. Okay? Right. Now, let's just pause and recap just for a second, shall we? You should now know how to find out for any given element the relative atomic mass, that's its mass number, number of, sorry, atomic number, oh, it's there, atomic number, number of protons, neutrons, electrons. Just to remind you, protons is given by the atomic number, electrons is given by the atomic number, neutrons is given by the difference between these two here. Okay, should we give you a bit of a challenge? I think you're ready for a challenge now. Let's have a look, shall we? Now, here we've got a selection of elements. Now, there's bits missing. What you've got to do, you've got to put in the symbol, look at the atomic number from the periodic table, look at relative atomic mass from the periodic table, number of protons, don't forget, is given by the atomic number, number of electrons is given by the atomic number, and number of neutrons is given by the difference between this number and that number. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pause at this point, pause, okay, don't cheat, pause, stop the video, please, at this point, and try and complete this table, okay? So when you're ready, pause. When you fill it in, continue. Okay, here's the answers. I'm trusting you here, you didn't cheat. So, what I should do now also is pause this point and go through all of these elements, checking got it right. Let's just do one as an example. Lithium was Li, the red bits that you put in. Lithium is Li. If you read it off the table, it's on number three. That tells you straight away you got three protons and three electrons. It's that easy. Relative atomic mass of 7, to work out neutrons, is the difference between these two. So 7 minus 3 is 4. Look at this one. 39 minus 19 is 20. 9 minus 4 is 5. And so on. Okay? Hope you can see the pattern here. It really is that simple. Right, let's move on. Now, note, important thing to note here, the periodic table is arranged in order of increasing atomic number, not mass number. Let's look at an example of that. You can see here, argon, 18 potassium 19, so increasing atomic number. Look at the masses, 39.948, 39.098. Can you see it's gone down from there 
to there is gone down. So if we arrange these in order of um, increasing atomic mass or mass number, they'd be the other way around. So it's always in terms of increasing atomic number. Right, let's go back to our atom, shall we? Now, do you remember that electrons are found in orbits or shells around the nucleus? Now, the orbits are limited in size. They only hold a certain number of electrons, and this is it. The first orbit nearest to nucleus can hold up to two electrons. The second orbit can hold up to eight. The third orbit can hold up to eight. Now, this is as far as your knowledge needs to go. Okay, there are certain changes here later on if you go on to advanced chemistry, but for the time being is 288. Let us look now at a couple of examples, shall we? Now, lithium has an atomic number of three. Now, notice I've done it the normal way around here, torn on the bottom. So it's got three electrons. There's its mass number. Okay. Now, the first two electrons go in the first orbit or shell, which means there's one left over, and that will go in the second orbit. So here is the electron configuration lithium nucleus. The first two go in the first orbit, one left over goes into the next orbit. So electron configuration or arrangement can be written as this. Now I get that's oh, just, just a faff, isn't it, doing all these circles all the time. You can actually abbreviate it in this format here. So simply write down 2, 1. So it shows you 2 in the first orbit, 1 in the second. I find this much easier because I'm hopeless at drawing circles. Okay, so here we've got silicon. Now silicon, again, atomic number, atomic mass, I've drawn it the, the way I normally have it. Okay, silicon atomic number 14. So it tells us straight away. Whoa, 14 electrons. Got it. Now 14 electrons. The first two go in the first orbit. That leaves 12. Next eight go in the second orbit. That leaves four, and they go in the third orbit. Now here we go. Two, eight, four. And again, you can write it as two, eight, four in this format, which I think is much easier. So to make sure you understand this, try drawing electron configurations of the first 20 elements. That's hydrogen to calcium. I know what, save time, use this format, okay? Don't faff around all the circles, use this format, it's much easier. Now, we can be helped in drawing our electronic configuration by looking at the periodic table. There's some hidden clues here you need to know about. First of all, the group number, remember the groups, it's these here, okay? tells you how many electrons there are in the outermost shell. So what we've got here, uh, oxygen. Oxygen there is in group 6, remember? So it tells us oxygen has got 6 electrons in its outer shell. And as you know, it's only got 8, it must be 2, 6. Now the period number here tells you how many shells or orbits there are around a nucleus. This has got 1 orbit, 2 orbit, 3, 4 and so on. So calcium is over here. It is in period 1, 2, 3, 4. So it tells us that calcium has got four shells around the nucleus. And here it is. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's got 20 electrons. We can tell that from its atomic number. 2 go there. 8, 8, 2. And again, oh, I do prefer this way of doing things. I really do. 2, 8, 8, 2 is its configuration.